Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. Welcome, I welcome all of you again in the virtual learning system of Pakistan International School, Taif, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. As you know that this is Pakistan International School, Taif online class for class nine junior or class eight. Subject, computer science. This is our 16 lecture. Before E, we have completed the 15 lecture. And this is our 16 lecture. Teacher name, as you know that, Sir Imran Ahmed. This is your, the title page of your book, textbook for computer science, grade nine student. I hope now you will have getting all of you have the these books. This book is for National Book Foundation. So you must have this book to revise your course. In the previous lectures, we were discussing about the chapter number one, which is fundamental of computer. Over there. We will discuss the MCQs, 10 MCQs. This is the exercise MCQs. We already done this M, uh, MCQs before the E or in the previous lectures. In the exercise, there was 10 short question which we have already revised, 10 short question and the five long questions. These are the question which are present in the exercise. And we were starting, I knew that we were starting the extra questions which were present in the chapter, but not present in the exercise we were discussing about those topics. So these are the topics or these are the question belongs to the exercise question. For example, over here, this is the exercise question, right? The short notes, the short answer of the following question. And the first one was describe Napier bonds and slide rule up to so on. Compare first and third generation was the second question. Already we have discussed in detail. Question number three was differentiated between analog and digital computer up to so on. It means that we already discussed the first 10 short question in our previous classes. Five long questions also in the previous classes. So this is the short question or going to long question. Question number three, write long answer of the following question, describe the five generation of the computer. Over here, first question is five generation. In the previous lecture, we already have discussed in detail the first generation of computer, second generation of computer, third generation, fourth generation, and fifth generation. This is the feedback of our previous lectures. So already we have discussed in very detail all the generations in all the five generation in very detail. Next question was long question. I am talking about the long question. Write in note on mainframe, mini computer and micro computer. So already we have discussed in very detail. Next question, this is the very, very important question. I saw many times in the board examination paper, this question is explain the basic components or basic operations of a computer. So input, process, output, and story. This is the diagram belongs to your book. Your book contains this diagram. Input operation, processing operation, story operation, and output operation. Next question was, write a short note on the following. Short note means, although watch over here, there are five different parts. Hardware engineer, network administrator, database administrator, web designer. So already we have discussed in detail this question. The last question of your exercise. Last question of your long question of your exercise was productivity software, business software, entertainment software, education. So these are the questions, 10 short question and five long questions belongs to the exercise. Now comes to the next question, which are present in the chapter, but not present in the exercise and these questions are right in our on abacus i we already have discussed this the device next was write a note on the pascaline and holyrath desk this is the pascaline and this one is the holyrath desk 
Next question was differentiate define dif uh, difference engine and analytical engine. So this diagram is belongs to the difference engine, and this diagram belongs to the analytical engine. Already we have discussed in the, our previous lectures. So we are giving the we are taking the feedback of our previous lecture. Next question was describe the supercomputer. Supercomputer definition. So next question. This is the long question. This is the question uh, which is present in the chapter number one, but not present in the exercise. So a uh, question is describe the applications of computer in various field: education, business, defense, media, manufacturing. So this is the question belongs to the. Uh, chapter number one. Next question is describe the carriers in information technology. Means what you want to be in uh, if you are a computer student. So what you want to be a programmer, a system analyst, computer teacher like I am. So it depends on your future. So what you want. Already we have discussed this question. Write in note on input devices. Input devices. Keyboard, mouse, microphone, scanner, barcode reader, digital camera, touch screen. Yes, I remember that I gave you assignment, but no one gave me back that I assignment was search the devices in your Google. Google, those devices, those input devices. Other than this one, which one? Touch screen, digital camera. These devices are present in your chapter. I know these devices are present, but search those devices which are not present in your chapter means, but they are input devices. So you will write and send me, but no one will send me. So now Eid is gone. So I hope you will. Be. This is a feedback. Of our previous lecture till over here, this is a feedback of our previous lecture. Our today topic is define the system unit and its component. So system unit, system unit means computer. Computer means if you come to the lab, you see there is monitor and there is another one. Is CPU is present. Actually, that one not a CPU. That one is called system unit. Inside system unit, many things are present. We will discuss one by one in detail. System unit is the main part of computer. It includes, it means that in CPU, which we actually, CPU, it is not a CPU, it is just a casing, which is present here. But inside the casing, in, we call it, in computer language, we call it system unit. Inside the casing, what things are present? Motherboard. Power supply. When the inshallah school will be start, we will do the practical also. I will show all of these devices, all of this system unit inside the system unit. I will tell you. But over here, a motherboard is present, power supply is present, and drives, drives such as DVD and hard disk. Even floppy disk is also there inside the computer casing. Inside the computer casing. So boys says many voices. This one is the CPU where you put the power on. Of your computer when you comes to the lab you put the power on this is not a cpu actually this is not a cpu this one is called a casing this one you can say that this one is a system you because inside there is hard disk there is ram motherboard many other devices are there all the input output devices of the computers are connected to the system unit through the ports all the input output devices input devices means keyboard mouse where they are connected at the back side there are ports so all the devices are connected through the ports all the input devices input output devices of a computer are connected to the system unit through the ports what is the port this uh, we will also discuss and discuss this one this thing so over here motherboard what is the motherboard motherboard is the main circuit board inside the system unit it contains microprocessor microprocessor means cpu main memory at the main so you can say that motherboard is a container over there it is a plate 
you can say that it is a player or at above we can place many devices what uh, what thing microprocessor is placed on the motherboard main memory is also placed on the motherboard expansion cards also placed on the many ic chips connectors and other electronic components are also connected with the motherboard so my motherboard is a container which contain different devices all the input the output devices are connected to the motherboard next one is microprocessor all you can call it cpu microprocessor or cpu a microprocessor is the main chip of the motherboard that control all the activities of a computer the major responsibility of the motherboard is a microprocessor is control the all the activities which you have performed on the computer it controls microprocessor it is also known as central processing unit or cpu so you can call it microprocessor or cpu or simply processor it contains control unit the parts of cpu are what are the parts of cpu control unit and arithmetic logic unit and register major there are two parts register are inside this alu and cu but major there are so a microprocessor contains these things control unit arithmetic logic unit and registers what is alu alu means arithmetic logic unit is the part of a computer that perform all the calculations and comparison so when you perform any calculate let's say 2 plus 2 which perform the calculation al it is the responsibility of alu it will perform the calculation it consists of arithmetic logic unit arithmetic unit and logic unit so there are two parts of alu one is arithmetic and another one is logic unit arithmetic unit performs all the arithmetic operations such as addition means arithmetic portion the uh, responsibility of arithmetic unit is to perform calculation and the, as you know that calculation means when we perform addition subtraction multiplication division so this is called the calculation such as addition and multiplication and division logic and the next one is logic unit logic the responsibility of the logic unit is comparison so perform logical operation which include comparison of a number or alphabets in the mathematics when you when teacher says x is less than y x is greater than y x is equal to y s is not equal to y x is Uh, so there are six total comparison less than less than or equal to greater than greater than or equal to equal to and not equal to so all this operation performed by control unit and logic unit sorry logic unit perform all this next one is control unit control unit controls the operation of components of computer so it performs the operation it controls all the operation let's say watch over here mouse is moving so control unit is actually controlling the movement of this mouse it controls the working of all input output devices working of all input output devices input devices keyboard mouse scanner and output devices monitor printer etc cu loads program into memory and execute them so all when we are typing anything early it was stored in the main memory and cu takes that instruction from the main memory to control unit check the instruction is correct or not if the instruction is correct so it will further process otherwise it will leave so this one is called the control unit next one is the registers register are the small memory unit inside the microprocessor means register are placed inside the cpu used to temporarily store some information during the execution of a program the responsibility of microprocessor is used to store some information some information means store uh, when uh, control unit takes the instruction from the main memory it where it goes it store in the registers so some commonly used register the name of the registers are instruction register shortly you can say that ir accumulator register you, you can say that ax data register dx and memory address mar so you can call it ar dr 
or memory MAR register. So these are called the registers, name of the register. Next question is define storage devices and give some example. Storage devices. Storage devices means which can keep your data. Like watch there. So in your mobiles, there is ROM present. So ROM means hard disk. In computer, there is hard disk which can keep your data. USB can keep your data. Floppy disk, memory card. They, uh, these are the devices which can keep your data. Storage devices are used to store program and data permanently. Hard disk is the most commonly used storage device that is fixed inside the system unit. So without hard disk, we cannot operate our computer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Portable storage devices. Portable storage devices are CD, DVD, memory cards, and USB flash drive. Portable means in one computer we can use same after a few minutes later we can use same device in another computer it means that this device is called the portable let's say one usb is there i can place the usb in one computer after a few minutes later i will take that usb and place another computer so this one is called the portable but hard disk is not portable now it is external hard disk is also present so these are called the portable also Portable storage devices have less storage capacity than hard disk. Watch here, hard disk is one terabyte almost. Now it is present in the computer market, but uh, you will not listen that memory card is one terabyte, uh, USB is one terabyte, and then hard disk, but they are cheap and very easy to carry. Hard disk, a hard disk, a magnetic storage device used to store computer data. It has storage capacity of hundreds of gigabytes. It's fixed inside the computer casing. Portable hard disk is also available that is attached to the USB. Next one is CD. CD stands for compact disk. It is a portable optical storage device with a storage capacity of 700 megabytes. So it the capacity means capacity means we can store how much amount of data? 700 MB data we can store in a single CD. A CD is 1.2 millimeter thick with a diameter of 120 millimeter. No, this one is not, if this one is off. CD drive is used to read data from or write data to a CD. So, so we can watch the data from the CD or we can also save our data inside the CD. Next one is CD, DVD. Stand for digital versatile disk. It has same thickness and diameter as CD. Means it's also thickness and diameter is like this one, 1.2 millimeter thick and with the diameter of 120 millimeter so dvd is also acid bus but has more storage capacity so its storage capacity cd storage capacity was 700 but it has a more storage capacity how much 4 to 16 gb of data we can store in a single dvd a dvd writer is installed in the computer to read data from or write data to a dvd so we will need some kind of software when we install that software in our uh, computer, we can, if you have the DVD ROM, so you can save your data. Next one is memory card. Everyone is uses nowadays memory card in their mobile phone. Memory card is a small storage device having storage capacity of few gigabytes. Memory cards are generally used in laptops, computer, and portable device such as mobile phone and digital camera for storing pictures audios and videos next is usb usb flash drive is small portable drive that is connected to a computer through usb port it is also known as usb memory it is very fast in operation and its storage capacity how much 120 maximum now it is 256 i someone told me 256 is also present in computer market or you can put in extra stores in uh, electronic store you can also purchase 256 so uh, up to that uh, previous year 
it was the capacity of USB was 128 GB. Next question, write a note on the following devices and give example. Output devices, output devices are used to display text, graphics and images on monitor or to print information on paper. So purpose of output devices is we, if you are watching your screen, so your screen is an output device. So many output devices like printer, when you take the output from the printer, it is also a card uh, output. There are two kinds of outputs, soft copy output and hard copy output. Soft copy output means when you can see only, but you cannot touch is called soft copy. Let's say computer monitor screen or your television screen is soft copy output. But when you take the print out from the printer, then this one is called the hard copy output. So soft copy and anything printed on the paper is known as hard copy with our print out. Commonly used output devices are monitor, computer screen is monitor. Printer, plotter and speaker are the output devices. So monitor, it is also, it is, an output device that has a screen on which information is displayed. You are watching uh, the information on your screen. So this one is called the monitor. It has two common types, CRT, cathode ray, tube monitor and LCD, liquid crystal diode or liquid crystal display. CRT is old kind of monitor, which are like a old kind of television having the uh, vacuum tube inside that's why its thickness is very very large so nowadays totally it is discarded nowadays in computer market in so in electronic store you can purchase lcd monitor crt monitor is very similar to old television it is almost almost obsolete obsolete means it is finished nowadays no one is using the crt why they no one is using due to its big size and low display quality Big size and its uh, quality of uh, picture is not that good. LCD monitor is slim as compared to LCD as, uh, as compared to CRT monitor. LCD monitor is slim, uses less power and has better display quality than CRT monitor. Next output device is printer. Printer is an output device that prints text and graphics on paper, which is known as hard copy. There are two types of printer, which are impact printers and non-impact printers. Next is plotter. Plotter is an output device used for printing, engineering drawing, machine parts, building design, maps, charts, etc. So uh, paper size, why the paper size is very, uh, paper size is A4 is, so we can, uh, if we want to print out something, so A4 is very, very, uh, you can say that is slim and uh, short. If you want to big printing, so you will use what? Plotter. There are two types of plotters, that is ink plotter and pen plotter. Ink plotter is used for printing images, where the pen plotter is used for the printing engineering drawings, machine parts, building design, etc. Plotter is slow output device, but its printing quality is good. Next one is speaker. Speaker is a device used to produce audio output. A pair of speaker is attached to the sound card on the motherboard. So if you have extra speaker, you can place your speaker with your computer system. So you can listen high quality voice. Speakers are commonly used with multimedia software and for playing music and videos on a computer. Why we use speakers for this purpose? Next question is, today, uh, what is memory? Next question is, what is memory? Describe the types of memory memory unit stores data and programs that are being executed by computer 
there are three types of memories on the motherboard which are rom rom means read only memory ram random access memory and cache c a c h e means cache so these are the three kinds of memory placed on the motherboard they are these are known as main memory we can call them means rom ram and cache are the main memory or primary memory of a computer you can call it main memory or primary so we will discuss the rom what is rom read only memory is a single ic chip which is installed on the motherboard it store the basic input output system bios of a computer that controls input output devices and the start up or boot up process it means that when you turn on the computer boot up means when you turn on the computer when you turn on the power button of your computer what happened some programs you are watching uh, some programs are loaded so these programs from where these programs are loaded actually these programs are loaded from the rom and these programs are placed permanent in rom so this is called the booting process let's say what is the difference between ram and rom so let's say when you are turn off the computer let's say you are working on your computer and accidentally the power switch is off what happened so you will start again so it means that the programs which are placed in the roms are permanent permanently stored on the rom but the data which you are typing in ms word it will be if you not save that data it will not present in the your computer system so that program was stored in ram that program's data was stored in ram it is a temporary we will discuss after this one so first one is rom this one is called the boot process next bios programs test the computer components when it is turned on and then load the operating system into ram to make the computer ready for operation next one is ram ram is a random access memory ram is random access memory ram is a high speed memory installed on the motherboard it is read or write memory means read or write means we can write the data on the ram how can we write the data when we are pressing any key on the keyboard it means that we are writing at the ram and read read the data from the ram it means that when the processor take the instruction from the ram so it, it is called the reading information can be read from or write, written into it we can read us but in rom we can in rom we cannot write on the rom but there are different kinds of other roms are present uh, for example ep rom eep rom they are also placed so uh, on the rom we cannot uh, our data but on the ram we can write our data programs are loaded into ram from the secondary storage devices such as hard disk or usb flash drive for the execution by the microprocessor it is a volatile memory which means information stored in it is lost when the computer is turned off it means that when i turn off my computer all the information which are placed on the ram it will all will be vanished vanish means the data will be finished from the ram but the data when we turn off our computer the data which are present on the rom it will still reside uh, reside and it will never be lost next is cache memory cache is a very small amount of extremely fast memory inside the microprocessor or cpu on the motherboard it is faster and more expensive than ram it store information that is most frequently used by computer the purpose of using cache is to improve the processing speed of our computer the purpose if if the cache is very slow low so your computer will perform very will run very slowly but if the cache is very high or uh, the cache memory is then your then your computer will be very fast next question is define ports expansion slots and expansion cards ports 
this is the last topic uh, i think this one is the last oh, no no the last topic is present this is one of the very short question define the ports expansion slots and expansion cards port is an interface for connecting various devices of the system unit at the back side of system unit there are some holes are there as you see that these are called the ports where we connect where, where we can connect the different devices ports are the interface for connecting various different devices to the system unit there are various types of ports for connecting keyboard mouse monitor microphone speaker and other input output devices we if we want to connect next is expansion slots and expansion card expansion slots are long narrow socket on the motherboard in the lab i will show you expansion slot but over here you will understand it is placed on the motherboard uh, slots are narrow sockets on the motherboard used for installing and uh, expansion cards let's say you're playing the video games so uh, your video card is very low then you can purchase from the market and install this card in your computer system on the motherboard you can also so with the help of expansion slot we can install different cards expansion cards are small circuit board so expansion cards are the circuit board these cards add new capabilities to the computer i give you the example over here if you are you are a game lover and you want to play the game but that game is not playing uh, you cannot play that game on your computer so what to do first purchase the expansion card of uh, which is called the vga card you will pay that card and place that card into expansion slot so after updating the, your computer your computer will perform or will run your games these cards add new capabilities to the computer commonly used expansion cards are sound card graphic cards modern cards and network card. modem card sorry this one is called the modem card and the network card also vga graphic card is also called the vga card last question of your course of your topic is which is so these were the question which was not placed in the exercise but placed in the uh, chapter so today is inshallah our last uh, lecture of the mid till the mid term after the mid term inshallah we will start the new work course write open source software shareware and firmware this question belongs to our chapter number 6 but we were also uh, uh, Um, and discuss over here open source software it is a software computer software that is available in the form of source code that allow user to study change and improve it open source software is free to free for use let's say you have uh, you are watching your game and you will just right click over there and watch uh, over here look up our uh, properties you can change so the code which they are written it will show you it will be um, but you are you cannot understand at this st uh, stage so the code is written in html or different kind of language so this is called the open source software open source software is free for use modification and distribution some example of open source software are linux operating system is open source when you install linux means uh, a windows is operating system but windows is a not open source software cannot see the source code of windows but if you install the linux on your computers so you can also see the code of linux operating system open office uh, open office means office productivity software flight gear flight simula simulator and java programming language is open source software next is shareware shareware is distributed free of cost for limited period usually one or two months it is a trial version of software given to the people decide whether they would like to buy the full version of software example of shareware or antivirus software and computer gives me uh, when you download some uh, software and uh, it is working properly so it is called the shareware but after one month it will be expired it will give announce or it will give you message after one month it is it is on trial basis so this one is called the uh, shareware freeware when you download some kind of let's say chrome is a freeware you are installing the chrome on your computer mozilla 
so you can install so these are called the free that means uh, you will not pay for, for any cost so you can use so this one is called the freeware is a given free of cost it is fully version of software for an unlimited period of time it may have some restrictions such as allowed for personal or academic use only example of freeware or google chrome mozilla firefox vlc media player okay this is the last this was the last topic of your course over here your class 8 course is completed inshallah after that we will start next uh, semester course chapter number 2 uh, and 3 is present in the after the matter so i hope pause the screen one request pause your screen write your uh, write your copy complete your copies all of the lectures i show you on the screen so pause the screen and write this one this screenshots in your copies and read and revise again okay take care of yourself allah hafiz